so yes, as I said, my name is Mike Can, and I'm the uh, co-founder and lead developer of Marked. And um, we're going to talk about TypeScript. So I've actually been doing TypeScript since 2012, so not, not last year, but, <laughs> um, but it's only fairly, fairly recently that I've dived into some of the more deeper aspects of it. So, um, and I'll, I was blown away by some of the expressiveness of the language, and I thought I would share some of that with you guys today. So um, I don't really know what everybody's sort of level of TypeScript is or programming is here. So um, I'm going to try and start off fairly gently and then ease into some uh, more interesting stuff later on. Uh, and this is going to be a live coding talk as well, which I've never done before. So recipe for disaster, probably. <laughs> and uh, to make it even more risky, at the end, if I have time, I want to try uh, a play, play a game called Infer the Type. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. All right, so let's get straight into it. All right, so let's uh, start off simple and look at the ways that we can declare types in TypeScript. So um, it's very similar to JavaScript, really. Um, you've got varlet and const, and they work in the same way as JavaScript. So you can obviously reassign vars. Um, you can reassign lets, but you can't reassign consts. Um, but one thing that TypeScript has that JavaScript doesn't have, obviously, is types. So that means you can't reassign to um, a string a number and you can't reassign to a number an object, for example. Pretty obvious. Um, one of the powerful things that TypeScript has is type inference, which means we can actually get rid of these types here, and everything still works. Um, and this is because TypeScript is looking at when you're assigning the, to the variable, it's assuming, in this case, oh, it's a string, and in this case, oh, it's a number. And in this case, you might think, oh, it's a Boolean, but it's not, it's actually true. And this is because TypeScript has seen that you're using const, which means it's never gonna change. So it's narrowed the type of potential things it could be down to just the, 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 the case of true. So if we change it to false, it would be literally false. So this is kind of um, maybe a bit nuanced, but it's actually kind of powerful and uh, it's kind of spread throughout the whole system. One use case for it might be, for example, say we wanted to express a binary number, well, we know a binary number can only be either 0 or 1. Therefore, when we assign 0 to it, it works. 1 to it, it works. Or if we tr but if we try and assign something that's not 0, 1 to it, we get an error. Um, that's pretty cool, but maybe you might not see that one quite often. One, one thing you might see often, though, is if we have a function whoops, called listen, uh, it might have uh, taken an event, and we want to restrict the types of events it can take in. So, for example, uh, whoops, click or hover, for example. When we then try and call it, we can then see, okay, it can only accept click or hover. And if we try and pass something else into it, then we get an error. So that's pretty handy. Um, but there's a bit of a gotcha with this, I suppose, which is, Say we were to declare a variable here, we say we set it to click, and we then try and actually call the function with that variable. We actually get an error, whereas you might expect that to work. If you hover over, over, we find out what the error is. Argument of type string is not assigned to parameter of type click or hover. So what's going on here? Well, TypeScript, because we've used let, TypeScript has inferred that um, when we're use, assigning to it, it's probably, it's because it's mutable, we're probably going to want to change it in the future. Therefore, it's expanded that type out to a string. So if we wanted to fix this, we could explicitly type it as click, and then that works. Or we could do what we did before. We can set it as const, which then turns event into the literal type of click. Cool. So let's see how this works. I'll take a bit step further and see how this works with objects. So say we've got this function add user to db, it takes a user of type user, and user has a name with a string, an age with a number. We can then declare a variable of type user, uh, name Mike, and maybe optimistically age 20. Um, we can then call that function with the user, uh, as we'd expect. Um, but because TypeScript is type inference, we can remove the type from the user, and it still works. And if we hover over user, we can see that user is typed to the literal object type of name, age, uh, and string and number. So this might be kind of odd if you come from like a, a C Sharp or Java background where you actually have to explicitly always type your variables before you 
before we use them. Um, TypeScript has got something called a structural subtype language, which means that basically means that if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. So every property has to match up with the properties that you give it. So if we change this to be a different type, say to a string, then we get an error. So it has to be exactly the same thing, same, same type. Um, but there's a bit of a gotcha here. So it doesn't prevent you from adding extra properties to your object. We don't get compile error. So this is, this could be a bit of a problem. Like if, it, for example, this function add use to DB, we aren't checking that there are extra properties on this object. And then we're just throwing this object in the database. Well, we've now got an invalid database. Um, so how can we get around with this? Well, one way we could put the type back on here. What, and then we now get this here saying, foo does not exist in type user. But maybe what we want to do is we wanted to say, like at the function level, we want to say, OK, this is, we want to accept a user, but we don't want to accept any other like, properties on the user. It has to be exactly a user. Like, how would we do that? It turns out it's actually harder than it probably should be in TypeScript. And before I can explain that, I have to sort of back up and show you some other stuff. OK, so there's another example. So, Say we've got this function pick, and given an object and some keys, it's going to return another object with those, just those keys on it. So given this user with a name, age, and this function say, when we call a pick with it uh, with a name and age, it should return back just something that looks like this, name, uh, name and age. But obviously, because we haven't typed anything yet, all we're getting back is just object, which is not very useful. Um, and worse than that, we're also, we can all also call it with properties that don't actually exist on the object. Whereas we, it would be nice if we actually got an error here telling us, you know, this foo doesn't exist on this, this object, so you can't actually use it. And even worse than that, we can actually call it with something that's not even, you know, an array of strings. So that's kind of a problem. So let's see what, if we can leverage some types, TypeScript stuff to improve this. So the first thing we could probably do is we could probably turn this into an array of strings. And then so immediately, we get an error here. But what about this one? Well, kind of what we want to do here is we want to say that this array here can only be the keys of this object. But we don't know what the, the, ob the type of the object is here. So we need to relate them to each other somehow. So what we can do that is that we can parameterize this object. We can say, OK, this is going to be passed in, and we're going to parameterize it to type T. So now TypeScript's going to infer we're going to infer the type from our usage here, and then we can use this really cool keyword called key of t, and that basically does what it sounds like. It iterates, it lists all the keys of a given type t. So now we get the error foo it says string is not assignable to name, age, or say because those are the keys on the uh, type that we're given it. Cool, so we've fixed those two, but what about, um, what about returning the type of this? Rather than returning objects, how can we return something that is just a subset of these properties on here? Well, what we, what we need is a new type. So we want to be returning a new type. So let's maybe let's put in here. So we're going to pick T, and then up here we can actually code it separately. Type pick T equals this. So just for now, we're just going to return it back as an object and have a look at it. Ah, so this is maybe not very useful for demo purposes because it's showing us the type alias itself. And what we want to see is we want to see what it resolves to. So there's a little trick you, to do that. You can say type resolved equals type of picked. So now we can see what it actually resolves to. So it resolves to uh, a literal object, which is what we expect. So Let's move on. So let's work out what we want to do is we want to return back a literal object where the keys are just these things. So before we do that, let's first let's let's return back a literal object with all the keys of T. So we can do that by doing uh, k in T, and we're going to return back uh, any. Actually, it's to return back um, sorry in key of T. And we can return back the actual. We can look up on T with k. We can look up the uh, value of the uh, key in this. So when we hover over it now, we see we've got our object name, string, age, number, say, and then the function. But what we want to do 
is we want to be able to narrow it down so it's only the keys that we provide here. Rather than all the keys here, we want to somehow just pass that into this here. So we can do that by parameterizing again. So if we turn that into a U there and a U here, it doesn't really matter what generic argument variable name you use, but I'm just using U. Um, we can pass that in there, another one in here, and then we can stick it in here. Um, but now we get errors. Um, K cannot index T. U is not assignable to this. Not very useful errors. What's going wrong is that we haven't linked U to T in here anywhere. So what we need to do is we need to put constraints on this U. We need to say that U extends P of T. And then we need to do the same on this one. Extends key of T. And now our foo error is correctly, and our resolve type is we get just the things that we want. So key of, pretty powerful. Let's take it up a notch. So now this function's similar, but different. So instead of the user supplying the list of keys, what we want is the function itself to return, to supply the keys and return only the functions that are on a given object. So say, for example, this user has got name, age, say, and say two. What we want it to do is return back a type that only has say and say two on it. So if we hover over this pick type, we can see it's returning back everything currently. That's because when we're doing our pick, we're supplying all the keys of T. What we want to do is we want to somehow say, OK, instead of all the keys of T, we just want the keys of T, which are functions. So let's try turning that into a type. So let's just say function keys of T. Up here, we can then define one. Function keys of T equals. And then we can do the same sort of stuff we were doing before, where we're going to construct an object literal. And we're going to say K in uh, key of T. And then we're going to look up on T what its value is. But rather than just returning it, this time we're going to do is conditional, what's known as conditional typing in here. So we're going to say ext uh, extends function. And then we're doing, we're going to conditionally check, OK, if it extends function, then we want to return back that key. And if it doesn't extend function, we want to return back never. And never is a special type in TypeScript. It's like the, the very lowest thing. When everything falls through, it's like the lowest subset. And so that means we can do something like this little trick in here. Uh, sorry. Key of T. So we're turning back this literal type. And then we are iterating over all the keys of T. And what this will then do is if, any, if it, any, anything's never, it's an invalid. It can't possibly happen. So it excludes it. So that means this is only going to return back the keys of t. So when we hover over this now, we now get just the function types, which is what we want. So um, those are conditional types. And it's, and it's really powerful. It allows you to, to like, really have basically infinite flexibil flexibility in the things you want to express. But let's take it a step further and have a look at something else as well. So this is very similar to the last one, except this time Rather than just returning back the function, we also want to execute it as well. So given this, what we want to do is we want to return back all the, all the things that are functions, but we also want to return back just the return type of the function. So in this case, we want to return back say is string and say two is number. So let's have a look what it currently is. OK, so it's the same as before, say and say two. What we want really is in our pick, here, rather than just returning back the value, we somehow want to look up into that value and like interrogate it and say, OK, if you're a function, I want to return back your return, return arguments. This is where we can, have, we can use our conditional stuff again. And now we can use a new keyword called infer. So we can want to infer the return type of that function and we return it. Otherwise, let's return never. And now let's have a look what we get. Now we get our say, and we'll say two. So infer is uh, super powerful, because you can use it all over the place. You can use it to 
work out what the arguments are of the given type for the function is. You can use it for an array. You can use it for generic parameters. Um, it, it gives you lo lots of flexibility. OK, so I promised um, back in part one that um, we can do the strict thing. I, I might not go through the, uh, the actual how it's actually implemented, but you can see it there. Um, and basically, it takes advantage of the conditional types and the key of stuff that we just went through. And so we can now actually um, detect if there are extra properties on that object before we pass it in. And yes, yeah, so that's about it for, um, for everything I want to go through. I just wanted to have like a, an extra, have I got time for a bonus thing? Yeah, maybe? OK, I'm going to go through it. So I want to play this little game. I haven't actually practiced this, so hopefully this works. Um, basically, I want to ask you guys to shout out, uh, say what you think the answer to these types is going to be. So what do we think the uh, T0 is going to be? I'll, let, I'll walk through the first one with you, maybe. Maybe we'll go through it together. So this infer test is being passed a Boolean. So if we look into it, T extends this, which is, a fun is it an array. So no, it's not that. This one's a function. No, it's not that. It's a promise. No, it's not that. So it's going to turn back T, so it's Boolean. And that's what it is. So what do we think the next one, T1, is going to be? Anybody? Just a string. We're saying just string? It is just string, yeah. What about the next one? What are we thinking? T2. Number? Correct. It's number. What about T3? Number? Yeah, getting good at this. What about T4? String? String? String array? String array. Correct. All right. Plenty good at this. What about this final one? <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> Boolean? Any other guesses? Let me go with Boolean is your final answer. It is Boolean. Well done. All right, and for the bonus, the bonus bonuses, what about T6? Any idea? Two infers. Hmm. We can say string. It is string. And what about the final one, T7? No? No one's going to guess? Number? Never? Oh, see, I, it stumped you. Final one is string or number. It's a union. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's, that's it. Thank you, everybody.